Okay, hello everyone. My name is Yu Chen Chen, and I'm currently studying the Institute of Nano Engineering and Macro System at National Tsinghua University, Taiwan. And today my topic is design of candelabra diaphragm piezoelectric MEMS microphone for signal to noise ratio enhancement. And this is my outline. And first I will give a brief introduction about MEMS microphone, and then I will point out my motivation and design concept, and then would be the fabrication process and result and then I will give you the measurement result and finally the conclusion. So uh, that started from the introduction. So um, in recent years, voice recognition applications and products are getting more attention than before. And companies like Apple, Google, Amazon, they all have their own solutions. And um, basically, um, their um, device was to, their solution was to use more than one microphone on uh, one device. And this was in order to achieve a better noise canceling performance and have a better recording qualities. And for example, on iPhone 7, they use totally four men's microphone. And on the Amazon Echo, they use totally up to seven men's microphone. However, such um, solution may have some drawbacks, um, such as the overall power consumption of the microphone would increase. And also, as long as one of the microphone in the array is broken, the entire system may lose its original function. So for the man's microphone, there are some important features that it should possess. Um, first, the microphone should be high performance um, in terms of signal to noise ratio and frequency response, etc. And second, the man's microphone should be low power consumption. And third, the structure of the MEMS microphone should be robust enough to withstand the potential damage in daily usage, such as water vapor or dust. And last but not least, the microphone should be low cost. So there are basically two types of sensing mechanism for MEMS microphone. Uh, one is capacitive and the other is piezoelectric. So the main advantage of piezoelectric microphone is that it has um, relatively lower power cons consumption and also um, its structure is basically water and dust proof, which makes it more um, poten has it has more potential for future applications. While um, right now on the market, the mainstream is still capacitive microphone, and leading by several companies and having tons of products. While for the piezoelectric microphone, there is only one provider, uh, which is Vesper, and there is only um, a few products available. And here the figure here. This is a product from Vesper, and their design was to use four triangle candelabra as their structure. And so I would also adopt this structure as my reference. And later there would be more uh, comparison and analysis. So let's move on to the motivation and design concept. So um, my design concept was um, to use the candelabra as the structure of the microphone in order to achieve a high sensitivity. And then when doing the arrangement of the candelabras, I would try to reduce the gaps between the uh, candelabras to prevent the acoustic resistance loss. And then to evaluate different structure and to optimize the electro patterns, I would use the uh, output energy as the field of memory since the signal to noise ratio is um, positively uh, related to the output energy. So um, that's, um, let me briefly explain the sensing mechanism for the piezoelectric microphone. So here we have a um, piezoelectric uh, candelabra diaphragm. The purple part is piezoelectric layer, the gray part is device layer, and the yellow layer is the top and bottom electro. So if we input a sound pressure, then the candelabra will bend like this, and such bending will create a bending stress inside the material. And in the piezoelectric layer, the stress can be transformed into the electric displacement by direct piezoelectric effect, and then the electric displacement uh, can be collected and created charge by the uh, electrode and divided by the capacitance of the device will be the final output voltage. So the overall gain flow chart will be like this. First, the sound pressure hit on the structure created stress. Stress um, will transform into charge by piezoelectric effect and then the output voltage. So my design will mainly focus on the first part, which is by uh, design a structure to induce more stress under the same output uh, input sound pressure. So 
Um, here I have two types of structure. On the left is the reference type, which, as I mentioned in the introduction, is Vesper's design. They, um, this is a um, 45 degree right triangle can the lovers. Bottom here is the anchor. And on the right is the proposed design, which is um, square candelabra. And note that both of the candelabra have the same diaphragm area, which could receive the same amount of sound pressure and have a fair comparison. So from the final element uh, simulation result, we can see that the proposed type here have a, a larger stress and also wider stress distribution, which could is more um, beneficial for charge accumulation. So we could expect it to have a higher sensing signal. And also from the simulation result, we can see the proposed type here has um, higher output energy when the electrode is covered around 40% from the anchor to the tip. And since the output energy is positively correlated to the signal to noise ratio, so we could expect it, the microphone um, made from uh, made of the proposed candelabra could have a higher signal to noise ratio. And if we assemble four candelabra into one device and arrange them like a square diaphragm, then we should consider the um, arrangement since the thin film residual stress will bend the candelabra and therefore enlarge the gap between the candelabras and have the then uh, reduce the acoustic resistant loss. So um, the proposed design here is designed to have the longitudinal axis of two adjacent candelabra orthogonal to each others. So in this way, when the residual stress warping happened, the gap will be limited and therefore prevent acoustic resistance loss and uh, prevent the sensitivity loss at low sen uh, frequency. So that's all for the design concept. Let's move on to the fabrication process. So by the help of uh, global MEMS, we could uh, have the SOI wafer deposit with zirconia oxide isolation layer and the platinum bottom electro and the PZT piezoelectric layer. So the first step was to use PZT wet etching to open the bottom electro. And the second step was to use uh, Egon liftoff process to create a, a top electro and also connect the bottom electro. And the third step was to use RIE dry etching to um, uh, make the trench around the can lovers and also the surrounding Dyson slot. And the fourth and the fifth step was to use backside RIE and DRIE to uh, create a high aspect ratio cavity and release the candelabra and finish the device. So from the SEM micrograph, we can see that both of the uh, proposed type and reference type is successfully fabricated. And from the backside view, we can see the high spec ratio cavity is also uh, successfully made. And from the FIB cross-sectional view of the candelabra, we can clearly observe the layer stacking is as our expectation. There is two micrometer for PZT there and two micrometer of the device there. So the device is later uh, wire bonded onto a um, PC bo PCB board with a, a hole inside. And then from the back side will be covered with a plastic cap to form the back chamber. And so now the device is ready for measurement. Okay, so the um, entire measurement was taking place in the anechoic box to isolate outside noise. And the device under test and the reference microphone was placed in the same distance from the speaker. And uh, the reference microphone was to use to calibrate the speaker. And the signal uh, output from the device will go through the amplifier and then go into the acoustic analyzer for further calculations. So the amplifier circuit is composed of two stage amplifier. And the first stage was the charge amplifier, and the second stage was the voltage amplifier. And noted that the um, charge amplifier has a low cutoff frequency, which is determined by the resistor and the uh, capacitor right here. So um, here I designed the cutoff frequency to be at 5 hertz, which could ensure that there would be a flood response above 5 hertz. And it could ensure that the their circuit will not influence the bandwidth of the microphone. OK, so from the signal to noise ratio um, measurement result, we can see that the proposed type have the 70.1 dB at 1 kHz. And for the reference type, the signal to noise ratio is 67.8 dB. 
And there is a 2.3 dB enhancement in the proposed type, which is uh, meet our expectations. And then from the um, uh, frequency response measurement result, um, we can find the low cutoff frequency at the minus 3 dB from the flood region. And so from the result, we can see that the proposed type and the reference type have nearly the same uh, low cutoff frequency. So this indicate that the proposed arrangement of candelabra successfully prevent the acoustic resistance loss and therefore prevent the uh, sensitivity loss at low frequency. Okay, so finally, the conclusion. So this study can demonstrate a piezoelectric MEMS microphone using a PZT and silicon unimorph candelabra. And the proposed type could increase the maximum stress and the area of stress distribution. And therefore, it could increase the output energy and further enhance the signal to noise ratio. And the proposed arrangement of diaphragm successfully prevent the sensitivity loss at the low frequency. And finally, I would like to thank Global MEMS, uh, CMMM, TSRI, and MOST in um, providing uh, fabrication materials and facilities and research funding. Thanks for your attention.